Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's another huge freaking fish. I really never hear any rumblings of a state like Arizona being known for its incredible fishing, especially when stacked up to some of its northern neighbors. But this place, it's been stuck in my mind now for a long time and I knew I needed to make my way back. With over half of the 48th state being classified as arid and semi-arid, this can seem like an awfully strange place if you consider yourself an angler. The knee-jerk of public perception tends to label the Grand Canyon state as just another desert. For those bold enough to follow your ears and seek out the trail less followed, you'll see that God truly enriches this mysterious land. Wow. Emerald green water. With that. That's pretty nice. It definitely doesn't suck. Your eyes can feast upon thousands of miles of cold, clean, and clear water meandering through pine flats and red rocks alike. Boundless is truly the best way to describe the opportunities for anglers willing to embrace a little bit of adventure. Be it tiny trickles running out of the surrounding mountains, or deep canyon rivers cutting their way through the rocky crag, there's a lot of water. Finding where to fish, that can be the easy part. Getting there? That's what separates the wheat from the chaff. Ankle breaking angles tend to be sharper than the cactus clawing at your body, and very real danger can always be waiting around that next river bend. Holy sh Holy sh that was a mountain lion. So you might be wondering, is the juice really worth the squeeze? When you compare the rare native trout species holding out in their isolated drainages to the potential for monstrous non-native fish species dominating the big water, there is such a wide range of angling opportunities for any interest level. That is such a specimen, man. Crawdad fed and absolutely Good to go. Between backpacking, truck camping, and simple day trips, I will be joined by some of my best fishy friends to hunt down the unique fly fishing experiences throughout the desert state and trying to document them all. Folks, this is gonna be one entire month fly fishing Arizona. I hope you enjoy because it all starts right now. When I first touched down, the owner of the ranch informed me that spring so far had been unseasonably windy. Seeking respite from the whipping wind, the two barn cats and soon-to-be friends hunkered down on the deck and looked on with curiosity as I unpacked my truck. With a staggering number of adventures on the horizon and yet another season on the road in full force, trying to plan out every detail can become a bit overwhelming. However, it's moments like this where I seem to return to some sort of center and am reminded how truly lucky I am. Not quite sure how I fell ass backwards into following a real passion, but I can specifically remember the smell of sage and a smile tugging at my cheeks as the sun sank below the hills. As nice as it was to be in the present and enjoy the beauty in front of me, my first outing was on the horizon and I needed to get packed. Fishing and filming in the backcountry is always an interesting balancing game because you will always need the essentials like your tent, extra clothes, food, and a sleeping kit. But for me, things always start to get out of control when you add all sorts of extra fishing gear that more often than not will never be used. And then of course, you always have the unnecessary and always heavy camera gear. Add in some survival essentials, first aid, and then some cooking supplies. And this is a recipe for a heavy hike and a bad back get approached a lot about what I carry and more importantly why and I'm always so hesitant to offer my advice because backcountry adventures are so subjective. I clearly pack in too much weight just to be able to successfully fish and film. As some of you watching may know, I train specifically for this kind of activity so the extra weight doesn't bother me all that much. 
What I'm trying to say is be sure your backcountry kit is tailored specifically to you and whatever goal you're trying to achieve. Early that next morning, the drone of rumble strips kept me focused on this mostly uneventful drive-in. Somewhat surprised and mostly relieved, I rolled up to a completely empty trailhead. Now, it would be a stretch to call this uneven gravel clearing a parking lot, but it seemed like it could hold a few vehicles if needed. All I cared was that it could hold one more because I wouldn't be alone for long. I would arrived a couple minutes early, which allowed for my stiff back to get some much needed attention before the pain and suffering would begin. I would just about wrapped up my stretching routine when the distant pop of gravel tickled my ears. My brother in arms for the next few days had finally arrived and now the hike in could begin. All right, got Jack, got the bags, trailhead is right there, but we have quite a bit of walking to do. So uh, we're gonna do him in a second. Let's get the hike in. Not so easy. Yeah, I, I at least respect him too, because at least he's actually really good. Yeah. Uh, just like the scale of it all. It's, yeah, it's huge. It's so and everything. Yeah, I've got a... Damn, I wish I... I wish you would have told me you, you could have used some uh, backpacking gear. Because I, I literally have a small... A small-ish sleeping bag in my truck right now. But, yeah, they talk about that and how like, busy the river got after... The weather's so dang nice. Look at it's always kind of, yeah, it's always hard to judge down. Yeah. Like no, I get that. We're going to have ourselves a dry fly day. I wouldn't mind a dry fly day. <laughs> Holy smokes, yeah they are. <laughs> We're going upstream, right? That is upstream. We're going to go downstream. We can go upstream, but... Oh shit, okay. I, I thought we were gonna, okay. That works. <laughs> I don't know why, but I figured. <laughs> That's just more so what I'm used to going. Wow. Emerald green water with that. That's pretty nice. Either side fit perfectly, you know. Yes. Probably not. Yeah. I mean, relatively, you know, because the, the. I mean, it's following the shape of the. Yeah. The shape. A kind of a, a new side of, of backpacking I've never really done. Usually, all my, you know, it's like, all right, buckle up for a couple hours on the trail, yep. grind through it, and right now I can feel my, my boys getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, it's a very interesting contrast. For whatever reason, when we planned out a dedicated backpacking trip, I'd prep my mind and body for long miles and a sustained suffering on a maintained trail. To be fair, that's all I've ever done when overnighting in the backcountry. Waist deep wading down this crystal clear river was like nothing I'd ever done. The sheer size and scale of this canyon was mind bending and the array of hues brought on by the natural splendor was a shock to the senses. It was rather hard to keep focused on that next slippery step with how distracting the never ending canyon walls seemed to be. There was no dedicated trail, which makes total sense looking back, but the way these narrow watersheds run during both runoff and monsoon season, I have to imagine any sort of trail would just simply get washed away. Dealing with a thick brush and shifting rocks, it was no joke. Luckily, it didn't take us all that long to reach a remote section with a phenomenal campsite that we just could not pass up. Yeah, this is this is about as good as it gets right here. Yeah. Luxury wise, this is pretty nice. That's what I'm saying, man. I just don't think it, we're in a very, very narrow canyon. There's nowhere wider than this that we're gonna find. Yeah. And as far as comfortable already made clearing, it doesn't get much when better than this. We one. could grade this out pretty easily to make exactly. it flat enough, I suppose. Exactly. Get a little stick action going right yeah. up a little bit. All right, well. 
Time to make camp. With an extra set of hands, essential camp chores could be completed at light speed. Without hesitation, we both jumped into our respective camp tasks. Jack was clearing out an even spot for the tents while I got to digging out what would be our fire pit. This beach we found was absolutely perfect for many reasons. One of the major being that we could shape the sand and loose gravel into almost anything we pleased. Be it level spots for tents or a perfect fire pit, all we needed to do was move a little sand. I found myself a wooden shovel which significantly sped up my digging, but like any good game of Minecraft, we needed rocks next. Yeah, that's exactly why I didn't like that one up there though, with the brush like that. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. There seemed to be an abundance of both round and flat rocks all throughout this section of canyon. That's, a, that's like so flat, that's perfect. More than enough for a robust fire ring and both Jack and I managed to find the perfect rocks for wow. sitting. Well, <laughs> almost. That could very well do the trick. Oh, oh no. no! You had it! That's you sick. had it all, Jack! Boy, I just love that new tent smell. Oh, is that new? Yeah. Shelter was gonna be next on the docket, and with how malleable the ground was, our tailored sleeping arrangements were easily made into something rivaling that of the most expensive tempur mattress. Last thing on the checklist was to stockpile a bit of water for later use, and with two folks filtering through the grail, we had ourselves a healthy reserve in no time flat. Immediately after, I gathered up all the food and set it high up into a tree because bears and other critters will still run these canyon floors and they don't need to be raiding our stash. In this kind of low pressure situation, it doesn't really matter what order you do it in, but for now, Fire, shelter, water, and food were all taken care of. All that was left was to rig up the rods and find our first fish. Perfect, perfect rod team. Oh, that's... Multifunctional, thank you backcountry skins. <laughs> I, I probably have enough food, the freeze dried stuff at least, for like many, many days. Yeah, this is sweet. I gotta say, well, there's there's only been a few campsites I've never like, or that I, I have like, been kind of mid on. Most of the campsites I feel like I find I'm like, this is actually the best thing ever. It's like, oh, this is well, we've actually found the best place in the world. There it is. He was number one. He was number one. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a nice fish, man. Alright. Oh. Majestic. Very graceful. <laughs> Let's go, dude. That wild rainbow was a great start, but this next fish was one I was hoping to see at some point during this trip. Jokingly referred to as the Verde Trout, the round-tailed chub is native to the Colorado River drainage basin and can be found all throughout the southwest. This is one of the few remaining native fish species able to compete fin to fin with the non-native browns and bows that have taken over many of the major systems like the one we are fishing today. 
as it swam back, Jack told me they use these little guys as keystone indicators for overall health of watersheds. Unfortunately, that would be the only one we could find during this particular trip. This creek, it was mostly filled with small to medium sized wild rainbow trout, super colorful and more than willing to grab a dry fly or a small streamer. I mean, what more could you really ask for? Jack mentioned he would run into the occasional brown, but that required a bit more stealth and throwing some bigger hardware. This would be one of the many examples where here in the Southwest, crayfish play a key role in feeding the larger fish in the watershed. So it was paramount to match the quote unquote hatch to the best of our ability. That's a good one to break the rod in on. Oh, I don't like the way he's... There's no way you die from that. There's no way. It seems a little too early to be... Uh... I just don't get that, dude. You barely hooked him. Like... When as far as his... And, and that, that's why I think he he might he might recover here. It could be like shock or something. Well, our first brown is a little uh, bittersweet. You know, I, I don't know what it was. If he hooked weird or shock or whatever, but he is... Uh, not doing too well. We've, we've tried to recover him here for a little while now and he's just, he's not taking to it. You can see his colors fading and his eyes are kind of, kind of gone. So we're gonna give him a bonk, put him in the creel. We plan on eating fish anyway. Not, uh, not this beautiful brown, but uh, you know, it is what it is. So I'm gonna give him a bonk off cam and we're gonna keep on pushing. All right, there's the first one for dinner. This is the ugly side of fly fishing we all have to acknowledge even though it's seldom shown. By no means am I happy this brown had to die, but you won't see me losing much sleep. We originally planned on keeping fish for dinner anyway, and plucking out a few mid-sized fish can help with the overall health of a system. Plus I think wild browns are some of the best tasting freshwater fish out there, so just know this non-native loss will not be in vain. Moving upstream, I was hoping to avoid that happening anymore, but we kept our fingers crossed we could run across some of the larger and more reclusive browns that were supposed to lurk in these waters. I'm not happy about this. Oh God, my knees. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So a, a little, a little one came out and chased it. And some about like that came out and ate what was chasing mine. That was insane. That was a huge fish. With the shadows getting long and the bigger fish in the system evading us, we had a mostly empty creel that needed a touch more attention if we were to fill our bellies for the night. With the fishing in general being rather tough, we stopped big fish head hunting and buckled down for a few more decent rainbows. Downsizing the streamer certainly helped me get more bites but none of the fish I found were worth eating. I was glad Jack was a bit more dialed in because he filled out the rest of the bag right as the sun decided to leave the canyon floor for the day. Harvey, nice. Way to go, way to go. With the, the amount of raccoon poop on that log, I'm gonna avoid cleaning in there. I think I'm gonna go yeah, I was gonna say, I wouldn't do it to the current. I'm just gonna give it a whack with this little guy. I'm gonna try your best. I've never used it before. And what I did, just to kind of take some of the fishy taste out, is I will descale him a little bit. That's pretty fair. So, and surprisingly, that brown didn't have a whole lot of scales, but you can see this rainbow. Oh, yeah, you're scaling. Yeah. Trusty cable. We're back at camp. Jack, how was the fishing? It was good. It was good. Could have been better. Could have been worse. We I fished like them. garbage. <laughs> but we're back at the camp. We need to get some firewood. The fish are all cleaned up. Our hands smell fishy and our stomachs are about to be full. But first, yeah, we definitely need to get some fire for the evening. Fire wood for the evening, I should say. And uh, yeah, keep this ball, keep this camp ball rolling. Do you got the fire making tools you want? Yep, I got everything I'll need. Okay. That's what I was getting tell, after. We're gonna find out. Yeah. What about pizza? Love it. Yeah. Oh, it depends on the pizza, though. This is smart. <laughs> it's pretty neat, man. I am, am fan. And uh, yeah, it's just a matter of getting the move. Trying to get big. 
I, I think this one's so old they've switched up the packaging since. Like, it's just like two or three years old. That's <laughs> cheers, sir. Smoky cheers. Oh, man. Dry clothes and the warmth of the fire were an absolute luxury after being wet from the waist down for most of the day. With soft sand tickling the toes, the only thing left to do was usher in the sounds and smells of a backcountry dinner. Night in the canyon was coming on quick, but our bed of coals was plenty warm at this point. Now, some of y'all out there might be rubbed the wrong way at the sight of these lifeless trout wrapped up in foil, and when taking fish, context is key. This is a lightly traveled canyon, and as you can see, the overall fish size was slightly stunted. With limited predators, places like this have a tendency to become quite crowded with underfed and undersized fish. This sort of phenomenon is very similar to what happens in a lot of high mountain lakes out west, and like I said earlier, taking out a few of the mid-sized fish in the system can improve the overall health of the watershed and when paired with lemon and butter, it's an absolute treat for the angler. Bag limits do exist for a reason, folks. So between the fresh trout, freeze-dried meals, and a staggering amount of marshmallows, we were eating like canyon kings. But with bellies full and eyes heavy, this day was certainly nearing its end. All right, Jack, it does not seem like we're gonna stay here another night. It's not looking good. The it's fishing not. is eh, a little bit to be desired, so. We've kind of picked out on our extra food and a little bit of extra secret sauce. There's there's ups and downs to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers. The burning nostalgia on the way down helped ease the muscle fatigue of a long, long day. Drowsy eyes didn't last much longer in the dying light of our secluded Red Rock Castle, so we retired to the tents and hoped for slightly better fishing tomorrow. Swift as the twilight and sluggish as the dawn. Sunken deep down into the earth, these colorful walls were robbing us of important hours and valuable warmth. With shortened days, it might have been a good idea to push hard on either end, be it fishing into the night or waking up before the sun. But after that hellish hike in, sleep is probably more important. So to fight the cold, I shared a bit of breath with some of the lingering coals from last night. We were already late to rise, so there was no point in rushing. The fire would at least aid in shaking off some of the lingering chills of the night. We're sitting back trapped over here, so if I shift it around and support the night, put in a bunch of air to like heat up again, so I'm just sitting back there. Needless to say, fingers and toes were mighty appreciative of the warm embrace and it made breakfast and gear check a bit more manageable. Once its services were no longer required, Jack doused out the coals and we were ready to begin our second day. Okie doke, it is morning two here. The coals are out, we're good on that front, but uh, this might be a shorter session. We're not too terribly sure what the fishing's gonna look like and over campfire talks we uh, I don't know. We, th we think we might be wanting to pack out today, so we've kind of preemptively packed this morning, and yeah, it'd be a shame to leave this awesome campsite, but if the fishing doesn't follow, then we got to keep going, so yeah, we're going to keep at it, get going, get our lines wet, and we can just cross catch a fish or two. With the sun now high, our expectations were still relatively low. We both agreed to give the lower section a second look before pulling the plug and packing out. Leaving fish to find fish is truly a heinous crime when it comes to this silly game, and yet I do it all the time. So instead of breaking this cardinal rule right away, we buckled down and fished hard. Oh yeah, that's a dimey little fish. We both did our fair share of cold calling downstream because morning was still a good time to headhunt for these bigger browns in the system. This time around, however, it seemed like the wild bows were the only ones willing to pick up our line. Now, with their almost neon colors contrasting with the clear water, neither of us were complaining all that much about roping in a few more. Plus, we could at least rest easy knowing we did not get completely skunked for the day. Despite the fishing remaining somewhat the same, getting to experience a morning in a canyon like this was worth every step to get down. On our way back to camp, I did my best to soak it all in. The distant song of the birds emanating from the odd pockets of green and the babbling of the river in the background was a siren soundtrack echoing across the walls. The hot and cold air fighting for airspace carried those echoing sounds all the way up the canyon and back to our sandy camp. Home sweet home. 
Well, the morning session went about as uh, about as good as what we expected. So it's time to get the tents, get the rest of the camp cleaned up, and we're gonna I think we're gonna move to Plan B. I hate the feeling of a second pack because <laughs> the first pack is always very tight, nice and organized, weight distributed correctly. All right, let's go. Jack and I tried to remain as level-headed as possible about our extraction forecast. In theory, we should have plenty of time to pack out drive to a plan B, and then fish out the rest of the day. On paper, this seemed like a good idea, but I've got to admit, all the numbers and figures we discussed started to crumble under the weight of my heavy pack. And this right here is the double-edged sword of overpacking. With such a quick turnaround, my body wasn't exactly recovered from the initial hike in, and not long into this upstream march, I was already really feeling it. I'm pretty sure it was somewhere in between the alternating quad cramps that my mind just went completely blank as I did my best to crawl out of this hellish crack. Bear with me here as I try to explain this feeling. MMA is by far one of my favorite sports and I'll go out of my way to catch every single UFC card I can. A phrase that's often used between both the fighters and commentators alike is biting down on your mouthpiece. Essentially meaning gutting something out, grinding it out, eating all of those punches so you can keep pushing forward and win that fight. This climb was about an hour of just biting down and grinding through. But somehow I managed to make it topside without falling back down or tweaking my back in some weird maneuver. So I consider that in and of itself a massive, massive win. I would hate to compare the silly things I do to something serious like mixed martial arts, but I think the analogy can somewhat translate the feeling. There's a certain shelf life to those hard-nosed fighters in the UFC that eat punches and keep stepping forward. They tend not to last long in the organization and oftentimes feel the compounding effects of sustained damage as they age. As we rolled up to our Plan B parking lot, I began to wonder how many more times I'd be able to rely on youth and brute strength alone to get me out of sticky situations. But like a cow with cud, that's a thought I might have to chew on a bit later because for now, it was time to finish out our day. <laughs> That is a lovely little brownie for this stream. Uh, it's a nice fish. Very surprised that he ate the dry, but very, very happy. I'm gonna let him go and I'm gonna explain what dry I was using there because for some of you uh, that are new to the channel or first time seeing this stuff, I've got a pretty nifty little uh, innovation that I use to run dry droppers. So let's get this guy back. This little yellow guy might look like a normal uh, stonefly or hopper, big rubbery attractor kind of fly. Um, but I tie these to be adjustable. So as you can see, this slides up and down. I've got my dropper here, but this can still slide freely along my leader and still is strong enough to pull out that very feisty brown out of some, I would say, pretty fast water. But as you know, editing mic will whew, magically put up 
the videos here. We've got the how-to and then also the FAQs. So you can uh, get all your fly-out season adjustable dry dropper needs uh, seen fit there. And yeah, I love this pattern. It does me well. And I think that was my first official one of the year, which is very exciting. So yeah, can't wait to catch some more. Let's keep moving up. Really catching our stride at this Plan B location, we both finished out the day with some excellent small stream fish. Jack managed to trick one of the best rainbows of the day, and I must say, the dark hues and pronounced par marks had me swooning from behind the lens. And not long after that fish swam back, I capped out the day with a lovely little creek brown that was equally as beautiful, just in its own way. Rich buttery browns with a smattering of haloed red spots was quite easy on the eyes. Any further upstream, the creek looked like it was starting to get too small, so we made our way back to the cars and Jack and I bid each other farewell. It was time to lick our wounds and replenish the gear. The following weekend would be coming on quick and we had another big adventure planned out. Calls from the surrounding songbirds ushered in a new week here on the ranch. And I think it's safe to say that the canyon deep dive and small stream plan B, it went pretty well. However, my time being limited here in the Southwest, there was no time to rest. Responsibilities at my day job slowed down just enough by midweek to allow for a session on some local water. On my way out the door, one of the barn cats eyed me down from her leafy perch. Before she could hop down and get some chin scratches, I was off with the wind and on the road. With a lot of snow still capping the peaks and runoff plaguing any stream coming off of Baldy, I didn't really have high hopes for this session, but I hit the once familiar trailhead regardless of the risk. The once vibrant aspen had been replaced with drab surroundings and puddles of standing water. Quite the contrast from my autumn memory. I was at this very spot not but a few months prior enjoying the true splendor of the changing seasons here in the White Mountains. I personally knew the elusive Apache trout swam in these waters and I'd physically touch them for Pete's sake. Despite this irrefutable fact, the current conditions of the creek had me thinking there wouldn't be a single fish willing to eat for at least a few weeks. But since I was already here, it would be silly not to give it an honest shot and at least work on some runoff fishing skills. With nothing to show but a wet bug, I only had the patience for a few more holes before I was to call this mission a true bust. And right as filming fatigue and general hopelessness was starting to get the better of me, a faint tug at the end of my swing brightened up my day in a major way. This right here, folks, is a native wild Apache trout. One of the rarest trout species in the world and boy howdy am I glad I was able to find one while I was here. This high water hero swam back to the tea stained torrent just fine and that right there, that was mission accomplished. If you want to learn more about these little trout, I'll go ahead and link a prior Arizona video down below in the description that will give you a bit more history on these special fish. Well, another group of anglers decided to uh, jump right in front of me. Maybe it's a miscommunication, but uh, I think it's time to uh, move downstream or switch up spots. The feeling of getting high hold on a long system like this was about as uncomfortable as the cold muck squishing between my toes. They seemed relatively new to fly fishing, so there was no point in berating their somewhat inconsiderate actions. It was just easier to leave. There wasn't all that much else to note about this particular adventure, seeing as my plan B was even more blown out. Again, just because I was in the neighborhood, I decided to go back and give it a quick stroll, despite the water levels reaching well past its banks. In reality, that one Apache trout was really all I wanted. This beautiful sunset and an evening revisiting old places was purely a cherry on top. That strong wind still carried the wrath of winter, but with each day, that sun was bringing a little more spring. The distant calls of returning songbirds was the telltale sign of warmer times to come here in the high country of Arizona. It was just a bit of a shame I wouldn't be around to witness it myself, but that's a regret I couldn't dwell on for the moment because another fishy weekend was well on the horizon and I needed to buckle down. Thank you. 
even though that midweek session left a bit to be desired, business at the ranch went on as usual. I did my best to grind through some looming work projects as the busy season of my industry started to rear its ugly head. I needed to make myself a little bit of wiggle room for future trips and short weeks to come. The bitter taste of afternoon coffee was reminding me how it can be very hard to find balance at times. I had just enough time though to get everything packed up and back in the truck ready for the morning to come. Hard to tell who was training who at this point, but my Pavlovian practice of sitting out on the deck each night and watching the sunset had become a ritual with the cats. The cat I called Gatito would nuzzle up with me on the deck chair, while the other one I called Gato would hover around the deck watching the horizon. I would like to think they enjoyed my presence while I caught up on some underwhelming literature weighing down my luggage, but this hour or so of decompression was easily one of my favorite parts of this trip. Obviously, I was here to fish and document each unique adventure, while catching up with some old friends. But I find that little moments like this really stick out in my memory. The silence of the evening breeze was only interrupted by the sounds of the night birds ushering in the blue. And occasionally the cattle would pass by or a wisp of a coyote could be seen in the shrub line. And for those of you who don't know, I have a particular soft spot in my heart for other alley cats out there in the world. So the warm cuddles of my wandering companions were more than appreciated. But that's quite enough on that. With an early morning in my future, I made sure to retire a touch early tonight in anticipation of tired eyes. Like a distant spotlight, the bad luck of a full moon was shining down strong on the ranch. Most of my more difficult outings have some sort of statistical significance with a previous night's full moon. Regardless of the sinking feeling in my gut, I hit the road and made my way towards the rim. The copious signs warning of animal danger were more than warranted because there were a shocking number of elk moving around major roads. A few new misses had me relieved to be stationary and back with Jack for our second weekend on the water. Is this her? What's going on, man? Yeah. Brother, man, good to see you. Do you, uh, are you gonna be packing today? Huh? Are you packing? What do you mean? Your firearm? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, okay. Um, if you're gonna pack it, then I'm probably gonna leave mine. Yeah, I don't blame you. I really only need the one. Yeah. <laughs> I think they've got, they got a whole lot of other problems to handle first. <laughs> the, yeah, the whole online thing just being absolutely broken. As long as she doesn't have Scottsdale blonde for well, guy, well, well, wouldn't I like to meet a Scottsdale blonde? <laughs> Come on now. That's a, my, my two favorite things. That's a good one. <laughs> it says, ultimate icebreaker, yeah. Scottsdale blonde. The hope of Gila Trout and the promise of a sweet kiss from a Scottsdale blonde was more than enough to fight off the chill of a mid-spring morning here in Arizona. Even though temperatures were set to be ideal in the afternoon, the air right now was biting at the tips of my fingers and toes. We kicked up quite a bit of cold dust as we followed this lifeless creek bed up the path. It took a bit, but we eventually heard water start to whisper and then babble further up the trail. Seemingly out of nowhere, a stream was born, and rumor had it, native trout were swimming in it somewhere. Well, rumors and this big green sign. That guy right there? Yeah, both of them worth a shot. You try cool. it out if you want. Sure, I'll give it a, give it a gander. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so they're really hard to find when they're they're they're, they're, they're available habitats seventy miles yeah. until to, a wet year. Then it's seven hundred miles. Yeah. And they're in all of those places. Right. Like, I don't think that they're how that. I think your math, your math <laughs> might be off. Unfortunately, just because more water doesn't mean. We need to start off pretty slow down here. I'm not expecting too much for the next yeah. like quarter mile or so. Um, but then once you get up further, there's just more water, more water comes in. Okay. 
Or you catch you too. You want to make a trout feel naked, just toss them on some slate. Yep. It's no different than put them in like a fish tank. They're like, oh my god, this is not this is so unnatural. <laughs> Everything's gonna get me. This is a good one. The only place you ever find them on that right side. There's a hole in the side. Yeah, 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 I see it. They're usually in there. So would they be down, like, so there's that one tier and then the second tier. Would they be on the second tier or is it mainly just on the top tier? You give this second tier a shot. Okay. Up by that rock up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe one or two cast, if nothing, and then just pound that hole. Perfect. Cast after cast and hole after hole, we continued to come up empty handed. Hell, we intentionally busted through a number of holes just to try and get eyes on one of these alleged trout. Jack was nothing short of shocked and I was starting to get leery that that full moon might have something to do with these fishless shenanigans. We kept pushing hard only to make sure to fish the most productive looking runs. We were clearly getting desperate or just downright bored because at this waterfall, some critters in the water caught our eye. Plucking these artful mobile homes out of the water to get a better look, I was taken back a bit at the sheer size of these case caddis. Even out west, these would be considered big ass bugs. Jack informed me that these were fairly common throughout the rim streams here in Arizona and returning them safely to their bedrock homes, we clambered over the waterfall and started talking about potential exit strategies. Yeah, the way I usually do it is it's like catch a fish, extend it another 45 minutes or 30 minutes. So if we, within the 30 minute window, we hook or catch a fish, extend it and extend it and extend it. Much like the morning chill, our faith had all but faded at this point. Just out of practice, Jack approached yet another fishy looking run and gave it an honest cast. After a few empty passes, I made the mistake of shifting camera angles, and wouldn't you know it, the AZ kid was hooked up. Yes! The Lord! Oh my God! As I'm like falling over. <laughs> there was no mistaking the speckles on the back with the sandy olive and faint par marks. This right here, folks, this was a Gila trout through and through. Seeing that sucker slide back was the relief we were looking for. Corey captured, and pesky skunk was finally off the board. Oh my god. Things happen. Let's go, dude. Fishy Let's go. Deserves. Fishy ducks are very Maybe well a scott's still blocked. Oh! What's the, what's the official time? Uh, oh boy. 9.53 and I start walked up to the boat. 9.59. 9.59 and we've been out here since like 7, 6, well, 6.30 6 probably. Yeah, 6 yeah, like 6.30, 6 Zoinks. That's a hard one. That's a, it's a well deserved. Hard earned Gila, yeah. Holding a bit more confidence in our cast hitting home, I went back to fishing any and all holding water that had the potential for life. Ironically, in a mostly inconspicuous side pocket, I finally managed to hook up with my first Gila of the day. Well, I was a little worried, just a little bit. I would say like one out of 10 worried that uh, I might be holding on to a skunk, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is my first Arizona Gila Trout. That is an absolute beauty. We'll get this guy back and yeah, try and catch some more. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> the trumpets of victory were blasting all around. Not only was that skunk off, but that was the first official fish on this new ant rod. And y'all know what that means. The plastic can finally come off and after the subsequent trash was properly disposed of, it was time to pop the champagne or in our case, the Scottsdale Blonde. The beautiful Scottsdale Blonde. <laughs> Sipping this lukewarm beer paired perfect with a local lizard entertainment, but once the show was over, it was back to business hunting for more Gila. Oh! Oh, how could it get more perfect oh. than that? <laughs> my God! Bro, like, my God! It doesn't get better than that. That's a medal. I, you medal. put a chain on that. I'll, I'll wear that. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a freaking medallion. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh shoot, are you serious? <laughs> Jack remained the one with the hot hand for the afternoon and was able to connect with another beautiful Gila. That fish was great, don't get me wrong, but it paled in comparison to the next one he hooked up with. There you are. Oh, you're a big Oh, jeez Louise, that's a good fish. Oh, jeez Louise. Oh, hot dog, look at that. Oh, no, no. Oh, no I spoke so soon. Oh no, Jack, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know what? That was in the net. I'm going to count that. I don't give a oh shit. my Lance, <laughs> that was a fish, dude. That was a beauty, dude. That was like 11 12. Damn. Oh, and I'm in the tree now. That's oh boy, that one was a real heartbreaker. No doubt, that fish would have been one of the bigger Gila in the entire system, and we did our best to keep our nose to the grindstone, but that would end up being the last sniff of fish we were able to find on this creek. At this point, we were both fully convinced the curse of the full moon was to blame and had these fish hidden away. I've seen it time and time again, and in all honesty, I'm shocked we even found the fish that we did. That extra light reflected off the moon allows them to feed confidently in the safety of the night, so in turn, they can sleep the day away under whatever rock or log jam they call home. And the biggest key to that is they can avoid being bothered by pesky predators like us. So as the proverbial gavel knocked with the final decision, we turned around. It was a good thing we made the call to look for greener pastures because the tiny trail back was getting quite crowded. Spaced out in almost a perfect fashion, we passed three other groups of anglers on route as we got back to the cars. We stopped for a few short conversations while maintaining a hurried pace. Our feet were moving fast, but we made sure to keep our eyes peeled, and through the underbrush, we saw patterns of red touching yellow, and that made us hesitate. There is a very fine line between death to fellow and friend of Jack. For those of you who know the reference, this is when trying to identify a king or a coral snake. But after a bit of banter, we soon realized that we were working with the red touches black and therefore it was truly a friend of Jack. And speaking of Jack, it's time for him to offer up a bit more context about these particular trout we were catching today because quote unquote native, eh, it might be a bit of a stretch. Alrighty guys, so we're done here for the day. But as a fellow lover of trout information and all things trout, um, here's a little more context on these particular fish themselves. So these are Gila trout, and these Gila trout are from obviously the Gila drainage in the Gila wilderness of New Mexico. We are not in New Mexico. We are a very good distance away from New Mexico, separated by a very large desert and a separate species of trout in between. So the way that it goes is they, the Gila trout, original Gila population in the Gila wilderness is here. There is then an Apache trout here, that is their drainage, and a Gila again here, question mark? That's, we're not, we don't know. No one really knows for sure. So the particular drainage that we're in now that they believe that they were native to is the Verde River drainage. Um, they believe that it was extirpated from that area through the same things that pretty much all native trout face through cattle and um, hybridization with rainbows and things like that. But around the early 1900s, they were gone. We have no more samples of what they could have been. We don't know. And so our best guess is a Gila trout based on the sights and ph photographs and everything that we have of those fish of that time. Looked very much so to be a Gila trout. Genetically? We're not sure. So the, the Apache trout, for example, was not described as a separate distinct species of trout until I believe the late 1960s, early 1970s, somewhere in there. And so to say that this is for sure Gila trout native water is very wishy-washy. Is the trout that once was native here, was it very similar to a Gila trout? Undoubtedly, yes. Could it have been a subspecies of Gila trout? Undoubtedly, yes. But is it certain to say it was a Gila trout? We aren't positive. However, is this an awesome resource that we should totally take advantage of? 100%. There are, like I said, the quote unquote verde trout that was once native here is gone. It is extinct, unfortunately. And so there is a gap here to put into a native trout species. And so your best bet is going to be the closest relative to that trout that we once had, which is a Gila trout. Hence why we now have Gila trout in this particular drainage. Thank you for listening to my trout talk.
little facts like this are just so interesting to me and I love learning more and more about the different trout species all across the United States. As beautiful as these wild trout were, quote unquote native, it might not be the best way to describe them. But one critter that is very much native and I've personally never seen in the wild would be the horny toad. On our way back to the trucks, this little lizard caught our attention and was mostly unbothered by our presence. After we bid that little dude farewell, we hopped in the cars and headed towards a surefire plan B to finish out our day. So this is her. There's fish right like right there. Heck yeah. I've, yeah. Well I can I can dig it. I wouldn't mind a little dry fly action. Oh, I think Would that be too much to ask? Hey, I'll take it. Every, the way I see it, dude, every week there is more and more dry fly action. The warmer it gets, too. Well, I'm seeing ants, I'm seeing spiders, I'm seeing all sorts of critters running around. I see a hatch going off down there on the water, too. There's definitely bugs down there. Yeah. If I were a fish, I would be looking. Oh! Oh, if I were a fish. A lot of folks would see this tributary as nothing more than a time-wasting trickle, but this is yet another one of Jack's honey holes here on the rim that is full of reliable rainbow hybrids. Now, to the common eye, it might be hard to tell these trout have something slightly off about them. However, with the off coloration and the speckle pattern, you can tell these ravenous little fish are hybridized. With what exactly? Well, that is the million dollar question. The previously discussed quote unquote verde trout used to swim strong in these waters and we personally think that some of their genetics are still displayed in the flashes of pink and green attacking our bushy dry flies. Oh, wow. oh easy does it buddy, you good? Yep. That's a good bow. Hell yeah, man. That's what it's all about right there. Exactly. You have a lot more repetitions, I guess. Yeah, 100%. Because, yeah, if there's only like... ass long holes, it's like, oh, God. Yeah, the pressure's on. You got to perform. Yep. But yeah, this, for sure. The, jet, the jitters are out. With a few more fish to the hand, this plan B was just what the doctor ordered to round out another phenomenal day of fishing. Small stream trout are some of my absolute favorite to chase, but with things winding down quick, it was time to start thinking about where to put down camp for the rest of the night. That would, that would offer us a, a, a higher guarantee of first on the water, yep. um, which I'm all about. We don't have to get up as early then, you know, right. we can take our time a little more in the morning, which is always nice. I wouldn't hate that. I'd be down for that, dude. Then to, um, yeah, because I mean, we could stop by a uh, gas station by and Payson on the way out, grab a few more beers or something. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. But all we need is like gravel. Yep, spot to sleep for the night. So, fire would be terrible. I wouldn't mind a fire. That would be... Yeah, I agree. I'm down Pretty for it. Pretty nice. It always just adds to the appeal that much yeah. more. Camping without fires just kind of, it doesn't feel like camping. Camping without fires is like, it's bedtime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what that is. Once <laughs> the sun goes down, it's what like, do I look at? What I've got I no, uh, <laughs> no entertainment. Yeah, like, Bumping our way down and out of one canyon and into another, we landed at a seemingly perfect patch of dirt to call home. Without hesitation, we jumped into our respective tasks to get things ready before dark. Since we were truck camping, we didn't need to set up any sort of shelter, so I immediately started collecting wood for a nice fire while Jack got to prepping dinner. It didn't take long to get a healthy pile, and I gotta say, getting a flame to catch down here is almost comically easy. With almost zero effort, we had ourselves a strong fire, Truly the perfect backdrop for the Angus magic Jack was conjuring up in his trusty skillet. As beautiful as it gets, I would say. He's on the boy, go. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or a little more on the well done kind of guy. You could make that into freaking shoe other, and I'd eat that. You could make it. Oh my gosh, that's a Krabby Patty if I've ever seen one. <laughs> praise, praise, Mr. Krabs. Outright gluttony after a full day on the water is one of my favorite itches to scratch. Guilt-free calories means extra burgers and cliff bars are only encouraged to quell those stomach pangs. And hey, while you're at it, you might as well wash it all down with an ice cold beer. So as the pink on the canyon walls faded, we enjoyed a few more brews and shared some stories while the smoke reached for the sea of stars. It's almost like smelling a color, but I, I can smell the cold breeze. You know yep. what I mean? Like you can, exactly. you can, you're like, ooh. And, it, and like realistically, like it has no smell. Yeah. It's just like, but it does. <laughs> yep. And then, it, like, it, my favorite thing too is trying to explain these absurd things to people that have no f clue what they're talking about, what you're talking about, and they're just like, "This guy's on drugs." <laughs> well, you, you you smell the breeze, huh? <laughs> you almost have to t like, you have to like bring them along with you. Like, it yep. really is. Like, I achieved levels of this pretty close with ex girlfriends because I put in painstaking hours to show them that's valid. how I did things and why I did things. Uh, uh, uh. Of that's course. Prop props on them too though, because it, it takes the right girlfriend to even be want to be shown. Yeah. No, no, no. Show. I, I, I totally agree. And it, 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 it gives some credence to the madness, but that most of the time at the end of the day, they're still like, you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's your fucking <laughs> A lot of my friends call me a psychopath, but I absolutely love sleeping in the front seat of my truck. There's just something so comforting about it, I can't really explain why. But with aspirations of being the first on the water, we didn't linger all that long around camp. Once we were warmed up around the fire, Jack doused out the flames, and we were once again on the road. Yeah. Oh wait, that's how a business starts. <laughs> oh wait, I'm, I have seven billion dollars now. Literally. Yeah. What the heck is that thing? I wish I could tell you. Some sort of ink Oh, yeah. All the Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, that's phenomenal, dude. I'm back Uh, especially because they usually just fish the rim in the winter for the most part. Yeah. And so there's just less people. For thousands of years, they've timed out their nesting t uh, period to coincide with the sucker spawn and the salt river down there. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, exactly. You mean it's like nature knows what it's doing? Exactly. <laughs> that's sick. Getting down to the river was relatively fast, but the morning bite was so slow. This gave us plenty of time to look around and pick up some clutter near the trail, and speaking of which, this would be the perfect opportunity for future Mike to offer up a rubbish PSA. I think this would be a good time to talk about trash. This entire trip, I've been doing my best to pack out as much trash as I possibly can. I get it, it can be a little bit extra, and. What's picking up one wrapper here, one tin can there? If enough folks do it, it actually means something. Obviously, you should abide by the pack it in, pack it out rule set, but don't be afraid to pack out a little bit extra. The trails can sometimes get full of clutter, and it sucks being out in the wilderness and seeing something like that. So if you outdoorsmen, hunters, fishers, hikers, campers alike can do a little bit to help, well, it can add up in butterfly effect, so to speak. So, yeah, that's my my quick PSA. I'll step off my soapbox now, and uh, yeah, keep on keeping on. Another one. That's a that's a full bag, baby.
With that out of the way, and a bit further down the trail, Jack managed to confront our skunk at a lovely looking pool. Two rainbows were the result, one on the stubby stalker side, and another with crimson sides and intact fins. Just the prospect of wild rainbows got my blood pumping as my heart beat now to a hurried pace. It seemed like the morning bite had started, so it was time to get serious. And like an answered wish sent down from the heavens above, my reliance on foam, being home, sent my first wild rainbow screaming into my net. With endless speckles and blushing cheeks, this wild trout kicked back strong into the canyon current. The radiating heat was quickly making air temps more comfortable, and the group skunk was no longer a worry for the day. It was time to keep pushing downstream. And just eat eat when it's convenient for them. Yep. They just go out at night time and they'll push straight fish in the shallows. Right. Oh wow, it's really starting to box up here. Yeah, could you hold that for a sec? Let me flex my upper body strength. Sir. Without so much as a bite from our canyon pinch point, I was a touch flabbergasted. The depth and current alone had me thinking this would be a multi-fish run, and I mean, it just looked too juicy to only find a big fat goose egg. So, with no more room to go downstream and midday now nipping at our heels, we began our pocket water campaign with a fair bit of canyon success. He knows where he wants to go. Nice. Well, that's kind of what we're after, and uh, I hear there's bigger ones, but that one, that one made my day, so that's a okay by me. But I will take some fishing up, because I see you <laughs> loading yeah, up, dude. Nice, that's <laughs> a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. That was what, probably like 13, 14? Ish, yeah. In that, in that direction. Uh-huh. Well, and I missed a bow out of here. Did you? Towards the back, yeah. And I, I think I had another bite on that side. Yeah, there's gotta be more bros sitting up there. There it is. <laughs> that feels like a better fish. Pretty beautiful, man. That's part of nice. Right? Shrink. Shrink. This guy. Yeah, no, it's, we, we out. Okay. <laughs> the perspective was weird. I didn't know if we could reach it. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, 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 hey. What the f is that? Is that a kawaii? Do you see that? Oh, yeah, that's funny. Whoa! Have you never seen one before? No! <sighs> but because my filming skills are so painfully amateur at times, I was only able to grab a fleeting glimpse of this funny looking critter before I zoomed in on a rock and it zoomed back into the brush. So please feast your eyes on these internet provided images instead. The Kawadi or Kawada Mundi is basically the diurnal cousin of something like the raccoon. The Central and South American jack of all trades are perfectly adapted to this canyon environment. Much like pumas, peccaries, and even ocelots, certain species recognized in the more tropical climates can be found along the US border, like this beloved Kawadi. Oh my gosh, that's nuts! They're wicked, huh? That's a Kawadi! They're wicked, dude. Crisp, clean, refreshing. No free shout out, Hus Brewing, but free shout out. Oh, he packed in a. He packed in a. We're doing it right, baby. Cheers. That's old school, packing in the, the bottle. Soft and warm, our beautiful beer beach proved to be quite the fruitful stopping point. I was feeling the flow of that lovely Scottsdale blonde, and after two quick fish pulled out of this nice drift, my timing was really starting to get dialed in. Like when, when you know it hits that good drift, you're just like, exactly. Mwah, mwah. When you know it's like going, like when you know your nymphs are dragging through that money zone, like right then, and it's like, oh, you're like, oh I think oh. there might be a fish there. I think there's going to be there. Like that. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> now that's now that's good audio. <laughs> that's perfect. 
Oh, hell yeah. You're messing up my line. Goodbye. Don't you worry. Ooh, look at his look at his back tail. He's been he's been the subject of a little bit of monch. Oh yeah, he got a chunk out of him. That's cool, dude. Pretty fish though. The momentum kept pouring on with another great little brown to the hand, and not soon after, another wild rainbow. That's a good bow. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Very nice. <laughs> That's very nice. Looking good, clean. Oh, baby. I, I bring this home. I bring this one home to Mama. She's a pretty one. <laughs> that deserves some fishing. Let's man. go, dude. Let's this afternoon go. is like it's picking up big time, man. Oh yeah. This afternoon, we still got a lot of day left. That's awesome. This afternoon is really turned around. This is a lot of fun. Jack, thank you for the assist on the net. That was big time. Let's go, buddy. That would have easily been that 16-incher. Couldn't keep it together. All good things must come to an end. Yes, it's true. This day had far surpassed any sort of expectations I'd packed along with me, and I think Jack would agree we had ourselves a killer day. One more run was agreed upon, and I did my best to make the most of it. Methodically, I managed to work my way up the left side and pick off two stellar rainbows sitting in the back of the pool. Looking through the mirage of the cascading current, I could see a few well-placed boulders that looked primed and ready for a brown trout hiding spot. And hey, wouldn't you know it, I found myself a dance partner with this next cast. With space to squeeze quickly running out, I flung some well-placed faith high up in the run and bagged myself the last rainbow of the day. That's one of those satisfying angler moments where it's like, eh, I'm gonna give it one more cast. I'm gonna drop the indicator. I'll give it one more cast, but let's just see. And, and then, hello. Bingo. Stocky as stocky gets, man. He is moody. I mean, I don't know. This is a good run. Great run. In the angling world, it's awfully tough to crack two home runs in a row. But somehow, as Jack and I were dodging cactus and clawing out of this drainage, 
We were riding the bases yet again and the proverbial crowd was going wild. I'm forever grateful for fishy friends like Jack who are willing to bring me along and share some amazing trout fishing experiences. Learning the land and exploring the history of these lesser known fisheries only adds fuel to the fire of this silly little passion I call fishing. This would unfortunately be our last outing here in Arizona, so I bid Jack farewell until the next time we could share the water. Hear that? Yep, that is another tire loss to the four service roads of Arizona. Oh my gosh, so much for the morning bite. Hilariously, I was only 10 minutes away from the trailhead parking lot where I was going to start my day. Well, you hate to see this happen, but that's what spares are for. And uh, I got to give a huge, huge shout out to a very kind uh, Samaritan. There's no words to say how much I appreciate your help. If you're seeing this, you know who you are. You, you saved my butt here. I would have been here for hours and hours trying to figure this thing out. But now, because of you, I know how to change a spare. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can run these mountains just a little bit longer to get to the tire shop and yeah, not run into this issue again. So, golly, golly, golly. Whew, what a what a what a stroke of of misfortune and fortune at the same time. But this is all tidied up. Let's get to fishing. I was fully convinced that this ill-timed monkey wrench would result in a day-ending endeavor to get this spare tire back on the truck, or at least a full parking lot at the bottom of the hill. When the gravel was home to a lone Subaru, purely in the business of camping. Excitement flushed back into my system as I clambered with my gear and hit the trail. I still had a chance. Well, that is, if I can make it past this vicious mud. Hey, man. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> The ill-behaved camp dogs were literally nipping at my heels as I started down the lightly worn path. Now, I'd never fished the system prior to landing in Arizona, but I've read extensively on what it has to offer. Given the right conditions, the potential for big fish was very much in the cards. The now speedy lizards scampering across the trail told me that the morning bite, if there was even a morning bite, might be reaching its mid-morning meltdown. But with the crawdad claws strewn across the gravel bar, I felt like I had some sort of casting chance to cross paths with a breakfast seeking brown trout. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Don't pop off. You're a good fish. You're a really good fish. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, you crawdad munching son of a gun. Oh, you're dogging me like a brown should. Oh, this eight weight is getting worked. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, let's go! Whoa. Let's go, you're a donkey! You're a freaking donkey boy! Oh. Holy smokeroonies! Oh my god! Oh, zoinks, Scoob! We got ourselves a mystery! <laughs> Well, as you have probably seen, it has been a hectic, hectic morning. Kind of a very much impromptu trip down here. And I've heard rumors and I've been looking and I had a freaking hunch that this would be worth it. But when that tire popped, I was like, great. There goes the day, what a waste. But ladies and gentlemen, this is an Arizona Brown. This is an absolute beast. I mean, come on, folks. That is an absolute donkey, man. 
Holy smokes. That is such a specimen, man. Crawdad fed and absolutely good to go. <laughs> I will tell you this, folks. I sure am glad I brought the new Ant 8 weight because that thing would have taken me on a ride if that was on my five. That was an incredible fight. That was a dog and brown. That was such a phenomenal fish. I mean, I know I don't stress too much about catching big fish, but you guys out there, you know it's fun. It's it's one of those things, and I, I knew that Arizona had them. It was just a matter of timing, water, and yeah, here we are making it all happen. But it wouldn't have been possible without this little fly right here. So as some of you may know, I like to come up with my own little weird fly recipes, and this little ditty right here is what I call the drift missile. It's, uh, I don't know, it's a pretty simple fly. I'll whoosh, editing mic, put this up right here, the actual recipe, the how to tie it, that whole sort of thing. Um, a time in all sorts, but I've got, uh, <laughs> I've got good word that black works really well here. Seems fitting, right? But golly Jones, that was amazing, and I mean, that's, I, I would hate to, to jinx myself, but that's kind of day made. If I don't catch another fish, I'd probably be happy, so. Yeah, I guess it's only one thing to do, but keep on fishing, man. Oh my god. Flat tire? Yeah, what flat tire? All of the distractions from this morning have been wiped away in a matter of minutes. I find it so dang funny how the cosmic blessing of a nice trout can douse out the smolders of anxiety threatening to make a massive fire in my mind. The sharp bite of the thorny underbrush no longer registered, and this day could be considered a massive win regardless of what else would transpire. And just because of the angler I am, superstitions did get the better of me because I felt the strong need to save that drift missile and switch up to something fairly similar. As the afternoon moved in, I felt the open door of the morning bite close on my face. I ripped through quite a few more runs resembling that of the first without so much as a sniff from any of the resident browns. After a quick bit of rehydration, I decided to switch up my strategies instead and target the faster moving pocket water further upstream. That was one right there. There it is, nice. Got one trick pony. They found the trick. My continuous searching game of quote unquote Marco Polo was distant at first, but following the clues that came with each blown hook set, I could hear the echoes of my rather loud polo at this next run, and I knew I needed to buckle down. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. That's another huge freaking fish. Oh my gosh. Oh buddy, oh buddy, oh buddy. Oh yes. He came out from underneath a rock and just absolutely hoovered up my fly. That is insane. What a fish. I think he's ready to get back. Well, that is yet another big brown back in the drink and my golly gosh. I mean, does it get any better than that? That makes me so happy. I'm not a one-trick pony, I'm a two-trick pony. <laughs> but that one was caught on, it's kind of a 
prototype fly. Uh, I don't know if I've got a tying video out for it yet. Maybe I do at this point. I gotta apologize because I do not have a fly tying video out for this particular bug, but I did remember to at least film the pattern itself. Like every other fly tying pattern I've ever talked about, folks, do not, and I mean do not, focus on the exacts. Just understand the profile that this kind of bug is creating. All the materials used for this crawfish imitation can be interchanged with whatever you like best, but as you can see, you don't need a whole lot to make this thing swim. Starting out easy peasy, I'm going to talk about the tail, or in this case, the antenna of the crawfish. Double up crystal flesh and rubber legs with just a touch of dubbing in between, and for the claws, I'm going to be using two sections of thin black zonker strip. Once those are all locked in, it's time for the body section. And Order of operations is very key here because once I get the hackle in place, I'm going to make sure to lock in my dumbbell eyes. This is the weight needed to get that fly down number one, but number two, it gives it its signature cadence when swimming. It looks like a distressed crawfish. Now to make it really buggy, I'm going to do forward wraps on both of those hackle feathers and then right after that follow it with some very thin wire. This adds a bit of extra strength and prevents those hackle feathers from breaking as easily. And I left myself just enough space before the eye to make it another dubbing loop. And boom, just like that, you got some sort of Frankenstein mud bug that can catch a few fish. Okay, let's end it back Creekside to pass Mike to finish out this explanation. These systems are absolutely loaded with all size of crayfish. And that's what these big browns grow off of. You know, I'm sure they eat some fish, I'm sure they eat some mice, but their nine to five clock in and out is eating crawdads and a lot of them. So again, black is the color to throw. It seems fitting when in Rome, but yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it is so awesome to see that these fish are fired up, the water's looking great, and yeah, we're finding, we're really finding what we're after here. So yeah, this, this one might be done. So let's head up a little bit more and uh, keep on doing this. Satisfaction levels were at an all-time high with two browns of that caliber in the bag. And best believe I had plenty more opportunities as I moved upstream. Hey, that was a fish. Streamer fishing isn't exactly my strong suit when it comes to the silly fly fishing game, but I'm doing my best to get more and more comfortable headhunting for those aggressive fish. As of right now, setting the hook seems to be my major bottleneck separating me from success. Oh, stay pinned! Oh no! Maybe a little bit more forceful next time. Gosh darn it. While I continue to swing and miss on potential fish, the clouds are really starting to move in overhead. My once sunny mid morning had turned into an ominous afternoon. Threat of storms were now rather high, with half a dozen river crossings to reach my truck. The canyon itself was not exactly the best place to be if a swell were to come crashing down. Cautiously, I moved upstream, but with nothing all that convincing worth wasting my time, I decided this would be the best place to pause before pushing my luck any further. Well, our time here in the Southwest is over halfway done and that's kind of hard to think i mean it's so far it's been so amazing and hopefully you can kind of see why i love these places the lens never does it justice but hopefully you can catch just a little bit but yeah with this being where it is in the video at this timestamp, i think it might be worth sitting down for a second stopping the fishing and saying thank you and i I hesitate to do this and include this in the whole, uh, I guess, the whole video because I personally really get annoyed when other content creators that I enjoy watching uh, talk about their brand deals or go over their paid advertisement because most of the time it seems a little disingenuous and I just feel like it's forced upon you because, I don't know, are they really using HelloFresh? Are they really using Manscaped? I don't know. But all the folks that support File Season from top to bottom, from getting here to actually being on the water. I can't tell you how much it means that uh, companies and you folks out there watching are willing to gamble and take a risk on this and, and all that it entails. It, it just, it means so much. And it's not to say that I wouldn't have done this, you know, without all the gear, without some, some help from sponsors, 
but it certainly is made easier from the gear side of things like Ant and Hex, they've been here from the jump, you know that. And Adventure On and Backcountry Skins and even Broder hopping on as of recently, it just, it has made things so seamless. And you know, on the more kind of backside, the information side, trout routes, I've used it so much down here. If not to just narrow down where I'm gonna fish, there's seamless way to just get from Trout Routes, the app, to Google Maps. It's it's one of those things where it makes things that much easier. And then, obviously, all the folks over on Patreon. I know I don't post on there as much as I should, but to make these big productions and edit while working a job, it's not easy. So I do my best with Patreon, but your support is not forgotten. I really, it, it does mean the world to me that you're willing to, yeah, take a gamble on old fly season. But that is more than enough. I will stop the, the, the shilling there. But if you do have any, well, I said that. Uh, if you do have any interest in the gear I'm using, I've always got the discount codes and the brands linked down below in the description. So go check them out maybe after the video. But for now, I think it is time to call Arizona a win and head east. I think it's time to hit New Mexico. So let's go. Speedily backtracking my boot tracks on the trail, I was fully convinced of two things. One of which being that this might be the last time I get to see this amazing river. And the second being that I might catch a stray lightning bolt to the face if I did not pick up the pace. You see that up there? That's bad news. Time to break down the rapids. Luckily for me, I was able to ride the wind of that howling front all the way back to my truck, safe and sound. With my first move of the summer coming in just a few days, my eyes were steady on the road home, but my mind was stuck on all the packing and organizing that still needed to be done back at the ranch. The rain clouds must have followed me up north because the last few days on the ranch were rather wet. Gotta be honest, I try not to get attached to things because my life, it's always changing. Obviously, this is much easier said than done, but man, oh man, am I gonna miss this little slice of heaven here in Arizona. I bid farewell to my farm cat friends, knowing good and well, I'm gonna be missing them the most. So with nothing left to do, I saddled up and I hit the road. I had quite a bit of ground to cover before I could rest my head over the border in New Mexico. As luck would have it, my friends Tom and Shelby moved down to New Mexico a few months ago and were more than willing to take in this stray cat for a few days. While we all waited for the long weekend's fishing adventure, we had to shake out some of our shenanigans at White Sands National Park. Their pups have an affinity for breaking the land speed record across the open dunes, and no one puts the Tom and Tom foolery like, well, Tom. So. We were jumping and running all around the dunes as the New Mexico sun faded in the west. We'd originally planned on heading into the Gila wilderness to do some backpacking and fishing, but after a fair bit of discussion and weighing out our options, the group had second thoughts. New Mexico was sizing up to be a big risk, and they were quite intrigued by my stories from Arizona. Plus, a lot of the Gila wilderness and the good parts of Arizona were around the same drive time from where they lived, so this was semi last minute, yes, but it was still a solid plan. We decided to forego our backpacks for the weekend and go truck camping instead. Memorial Day weekend now at our doorstep, we decided to get an early start as to avoid the inevitable crowds. It was pedaled down through the open desert until the White Mountains started to pop up through the sagebrush flats. I find that slow changes in the scenery helped to keep the eyes fresh and the mind intrigued on longer drives like this because before I knew it, I was rolling up to camp. Holy Toledo. This is a camp spot. Good Lord. There she blows. That do be her. Wow. We kind of got an incredible spot here. That is so stinking cool. Well, Tom and Shelby had to drop the dogs off, so 
I got a little bit of a jump on them. They're supposed to be here in no less than an hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get camp ready, put some socks on, get some good shoes on, and yeah, just get it as ready as possible for when they get here so we can probably just rig up and go catch some dang fish, hopefully. We got plenty of daylight, literally the only people here as of right now. And it, uh, I don't know, it's exciting. It's one of those cool things where it's like, oh my gosh, no one else is here. <sighs> Hopefully it's worth the drive. Yeah. Let's get suited up and get going. First thing on the agenda was to clear out the area around the fire pit. Last year's needles still cover the ground like a shag carpet, and we don't need any stray sparks starting up a forest fire. And because the fire pit wasn't exactly the greatest, it was time to play some more Minecraft and gather up the surrounding rocks to make things a bit safer for a larger fire. I started restacking my big pile of rocks. I heard some gravel popping off in the distance, and it sounded like Tom and Shelby had made it. Sorry, right, don't listen. Seriously? Yeah. The best campsite in all of Arizona, and that's what you got to say? Let me show you where your damn pin was. Listen, lady, I know where my fucking pin was. It's called Follow the Hill. No, that's to glory. Much better. Did you hear the Did you hear the beep beep down there? I heard I heard an engine, but I was I'm, I'm like yeah, yeah. I was I was playing Minecraft and I was like this is gonna be a sick campsite. <laughs> I think somebody's coming though. Yeah. Well, I thought you guys said two. I don't think the clock identified. One of your guys' rods is getting a big old drag. I didn't touch any of that. Like I said, I was going to. Oh man, I could have done that last time we were watching hockey. I I know I uh, I tried to nap for a little while, it didn't work. What are you napping for? Yeah, it was exciting. Is it going to I have this for you. I think stack would be the cutest Christmas card, but logistically triangles might be better. It's definitely a, a more defendable position. We could circle the wagons up. So, which one do you want? Uh, Tom, you want to weigh in on this one? Tom, you want a stack or you want a triangle? Uh, trying to tell me you play Fortnite, but not Minecraft. Alright, so whoever gets this one gets to make theirs higher if they want it because yeah. I'm too. Yeah. You got that one? Yeah, there's, well, Angle Down, like, one of the comics was, his dad was talking about. Yeah, I do see what you're saying about the room there. Yes, uh, I got, I got, like I said, I got two pair, or two extra pair. This is what happens when, uh, when this is like, what I needed. This is nice. packed everything else, packed everything else. It looks pretty comfy. But definitely keep your eyes and ears open for any any uh, rattler boys. Yeah, I swear if we kill a mountain lion, I'm free. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have uh, we'll have like at least three sweet angles of self defense so that the game warden can be like, all right, yeah, <laughs> have it, whatever, guys. Yeah, well, because I, I was up on that cliff when I first got here, looking down, I thought, ah, oh, it doesn't look great. Then I came over here and kind of saw this. Oh, I was like, you swung far side. So I was up on that oh, cliff that right there. Yeah. Um, so like looking down that way, it looked nasty, but then kind of seeing how it, when I went over and then see how it teared down, it's like, okay. And then literally right now it's like, okay, yeah, this ain't too bad. No, this is in, in all reality, this is not that bad. So if we were to keep going that way, uh, maybe another two or three river miles, mm -hmm. that's the reservation. So there's a line there mm -hmm. where- Is it like you, a hard fence? Have you been down there? No, I, I doubt it's a hard fence, but- there, I know our reservation has hard fences, like even through the woods. I'd yeah, be, with accident. the way this floods, I would be so surprised, because it blows, it I'm blows sure out. I'm sure it blows completely out, up to- But just for, for reference, that we're kind of in this weird middle zone because the main axis that I fish is up there. Yeah. The boundary Was for the res the is right there. Yep. Roughly where you fished last time? But I, I went upstream and didn't make it that far. So that's what but I'm you saying. you started at Wildcat Bridge. Roughly. Right. Okay. We have, we've got this really nice cushion between us and between us on that end. So this is, now again, I'm not making any promises, but this is, this is kind of ideal for, yes. 
I think we can all agree that fish are never a guarantee, but the more variables you can take out of the equation, the better chance you have at actually catching them. But with a very popular weekend for folks to get out and about, this could be the distance needed to avoid those overwhelming crowds, which makes it tough for fishing. So with no more time to waste, we got down to the water and started fishing. Tom was up first, and I did my best to offer up the best advice I could on how to fish this kind of water. Hi, 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 hi. And bring it, bring it over towards me, so, yep. And then roll cast it out. Roll cast it out. Out, yep. Perfect, okay. Now get two hands on it and start stripping, start stripping. Get that trigger finger. Fast, 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 super fast. Boom, 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 boom. Fast, 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 fast. Yep, yep. Okay, now just kind of pull your rod. Don't strip anymore, just pull your rod, pull your rod, pull your rod. Perfect, okay. Now start whipping it out there again. Letting a little bit of line out. Using the, yeah, the water will grab it. So use the physics of the water itself. And if you can, this next cast, get it just a little bit further, the, the, the angle that you had the other time. So get it just a little bit down. Did you feel something? Yeah, I felt the bump. Could have been a rock. Perfect, okay. Give me like a four count before you start stripping. Okay, now we're really strip fast, 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 fast. Really wanna move water with that. Move fast, 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 fast. Yep, yep, kinda of just pull it, pull it, pull it. Cause they will chase it all the way to the bank. Okay, yeah, keep letting it rip. Pretty perplexed, there was nothing in this run willing to come out and eat. I decided to run back over where Tom was fishing and got hit with a very pleasant surprise. Oh my gosh, achievement unlocked. Hit it like a damn horse. Oh, that's so cool. Who's that? It's a smallmouth. Really? Smallmouth, yeah, yeah. So the lower sections here, um, this is like the best uh, smallmouth fishing in the state. If you can believe that. And he absolutely choked it. Yeah, oh, I feel like smallmouth are pretty good fighters. Honestly. Pound for pound, they say that it's some of the best, yeah. like in the in the league. Yeah. Came to the desert for big brown trout, but we found some smallmouth instead. This section of the river is pretty neat because it actually does have a really healthy population of these little invasive bass. But man, they crush, absolutely crush the fly, and I'm I kind of stoked on that. So I'm gonna let him back, and we're gonna keep moving upstream. Day one has just started, but started with a bang. All right. Let him do his thing. See you later. <laughs> At times it can seem like there's an overabundance of crawfish in this system. And I'm happy to see that my very buggy streamer was able to trick one of the resident's smallmouth. I say resident, but this black bass species is not native to the region. If you're looking for a fish to take and eat, small jaws might be your huckleberry. And word on the stream is that they are quite tasty. With our afternoon now turning into evening rather fast, we didn't have much more time to push upstream. This short outing was just a good opportunity for Tom and Shelby to shake off the cobwebs a bit and get comfortable with this new watershed. But it's, it's almost like it's a, that is one singular cast. Like there's no real like stop start. There you go, lift it up. Maybe give it a little bit away. Lift that rod, move back up again. We had a few more opportunities, but these canyon fish were mostly eluding us. And I think I think you could really take advantage of that. I think so too. Yeah, so I was just ripping with a massive hog. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> full horseshoe. Alright, you've hit it twice. Take some steps over to your left. Left, left. Your left. You want to be going this way. Or our left. That's a fish! That's a fish! That's a fish! Oh no! That was it! <laughs> I was ready to do me a dolphin dive in there and get it, bud. It's unfortunate we couldn't find any more fish on the day, but we would quickly forget about that slight sucking in favor of the vertical hell we were about to have to climb back up. This angle was more than doable going down, but my goodness gracious, it sure was a bear to go back up. Not impossible, just a whole lot of suck. We may have had to take a couple breathers along the way, but we eventually made it back up and over this gnarly hill and into camp. Dragging our lifeless husks back towards the trucks, we were all a bit gassed and ready for a proper dinner.
As that sweltering spring sun started to sneak over the opposite side of the canyon, we all got to cooking our respective meals for the night. Trying to thin out some of the less desired backcountry meals in my arsenal, I could only cross my fingers and hope the mountain house in front of me would only slightly wreck my guts. Seriously, this thing was so old, the expiration date was coming up. Tom and Shelby, they had it a bit better with a couple PBJs and a peak meal or two to quell their stomach pangs. But now with full bellies and a warm fire to rest our legs by, our evening was coming to a close quite fast. It had been a good day, granted, just getting out here was the goal, and getting on the water, that was more so the bonus, but with the upstream portion being rather unimpressive, we all agreed that downstream ought to be the play for tomorrow. The fire started dimming down, and we were all ready to hit the hay. This crew, we needed all the rest we could get for the next few days. Even though the bright sun was shining down on our camp, it would be quite a while before any of that light would hit the water deep down in the canyon. So our morning, it was remarkably slow. I decided it would be a good idea to make a small fire and Tom decided it'd be a good idea to burn holes in Shelby's socks. Being the neutral third party in the situation, I couldn't help but laugh my ass off as Shelby read Tom the riot act. After Shelby's wrath died down a bit and we were all warmed up, I stirred out the sock killing flames and we hit the hill. Letting gravity do most of the work, we flew down to the river under the shroud of the canyon shadow. Feeling the temperature shift brought on by the absent light, I was worried the fish still wouldn't be moving much. Lo and behold, my hunch had some sort of merit because we didn't receive so much as a sniff for the better part of an hour on some very productive looking water. Eventually, the light peeked over and began to illuminate the surroundings. The smell of warm pine filled the breeze while the resident reptiles made their way to warming rocks. I had a hunch the fish ought to follow suit soon enough, so we all kept at it and kept casting. Set? Yeah, baby. Set, keep that right eye, keep the right eye, keep the right eye. Let's go, Shep. Oh, yeah. Get in a little bit. Nice, yes, Woo! skunk is off. Let's go, Shep. Beautiful little brown. The Meg. Hell yeah. Can I get some fishy ducks for that all around? Around the town? This lady's out here two for two. This one's a fighter too. Keep the rod high, keep the rod high. Well, that must be a rainbow. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. Horse him, that's heavy tippet. Horse him, horse him. He's on the tree. Is he stuck? Yeah, he's on the tree. Tom, you hold the rod, you get, you get the, the net. Speed. Speed will solve this. Got him? Yep. Nice. No. There you go. Here you go. What the? That's fishy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to reset. Hi, Mr. Guy. Yeah. I guess someone else could have it. The switch had been flipped and Shelby put on a small clinic at this run. With the skunk out and the spirits up, it was time for Tom to get on some of the morning action as well. Don't go any further out than that. Go up with it. We're upstream with it. Yep. Set. Keep that rod high. Keep the rod high. It's a great fish, man. <laughs> yeah! Oh, that orange tip on his fin is so nice. Look at that. All right, man. Oh, dude. Let's see him back. Whoa! <laughs> From everything I've heard and read, that rainbow was an excellent specimen for this system. After it slipped back, we could all feel the afternoon sun rolling in rather fast. So. We hoofed it downstream in order to reach some of the better looking water the map seemed to be hiding. After a quick bit of hydration and a few minutes of drying out the raisiny feet, this crew was prepped and ready for an all out afternoon. I have to say, this is the kind of fishing I expected in this system.
that's about what happened. I just let it flow. Yeah. Oh. I think that might be a little small jaw. There we go. A little bronze bass for you, buddy. Yeah, look at that. There you go. See ya. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. It's truly amazing how fast a day can slip away when you're actually catching fish. We all managed to find more than a few beautiful Arizona trout as we prepped for the hike back, spirits were riding high. As we expected, the day had warmed up considerably and Tom and I both agreed it would be a phenomenal idea to jump in and enjoy this swimming hole. Was it worth it? <laughs> I'll be here all day, all night. All right, if Tom's gonna do some shenanigans. <laughs> well, you already know he's the master of shenanigans. He is the master of shenanigans. <laughs> I'll sit here and watch him all day. Oh my god, this actually feels so good. Why don't we fish like this? <laughs> I feel like it'd be more effective. Jeff, yeah, throw, throw, a, throw a hook in here, all right? I'll pretend to be a huge fish. Oh, okay. oh my god, we this. got him! Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> that was so much fun. I know. It's not too cold. It's not too cold out in the air. It's not too cold in the water. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like we're riding that perfect line. If it was any colder one way or the other, it'd be like, ooh. Yeah. With the fun now over, it was time to suffer. The camera will never truly be able to capture up the pure amount of suck this hill brought to the table. And it's a bit of a stretch to call it just a quote unquote hill I've met a lot of nice hills, this was not one of them. With the intense angles, loose soil, and thorny underbrush, everything in this canyon did its best to drag you back down to the water. Jelly-legged, we all managed to make it back up and over the edge, and once again, we needed to attend to our empty stomachs. I feel like we didn't go as far sideways, we, we maintained a good lateral. Yeah, the deviation, that was on my, that was on my behalf, I, I deviated. Taco, so please. So while clothes dried and electronics got recharged, Tom and Shelby got to making a little bit of breakfast for dinner while I was again on that freeze dried grind. The sun set over the pines and we all munched down in pure bliss. With Jack's influence from earlier in the trip, I had to dig into my stash of marshmallows and satisfy my sweet tooth with a few golden nuggets slowly rotated over the fire. Today had been just about perfect and other than scaling down that hill again, we were all eager to see what tomorrow had in store. Another front seat slumber was followed by a much needed fire. The morning glory was pouring in yet again, but the chill of the night was still ever present. Getting our gear to fully dry out after being sweaty and waterlogged all day was no easy task. But going on day three, we were all used to slipping on damp waiting accessories and just cringing through the cold discomfort. Ready as we'll ever be, for the last time we made our way down this forsaken hill. What's that? Somehow we did not like it. Right, I, th I think I think we hit it really well right there. It's just getting down there's the problem. Let's see how messy these are. I feel like we gotta pull something out of this. That's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have three T's in my life. Tom, Tavy, Tim. <laughs> and trout. Don't forget trout. Make it four. Uh, check the line on that one. If there's any nicks, if there's anything feeling strange, any kinks, we ought to we ought to make sure we change that before we start ripping. I'm gonna go fish the top. If someone wants to fish the middle here, and then if someone wants to fish the back, we can do that too. As we all began to disperse, I opted to make the early morning river crossing to the far side and fish that back eddy at the end of this big rock pool. As I finally made my way around the other side, I was met with the rather unsettling sound of something big moving fast through the underbrush. And well, I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing in front of me. Holy shit, holy shit. That was a mountain lion. Help us on the way, dear. Yeah, we could probably find a way to go up and stuff. Well, you see how the trees line that little crack to the right behind the willow, the big willow? Yeah. I think he's up in there. This little valley? Because that's where he took, he took a left up on the other side of the rock. Oh, you saw him over here? No, I saw him behind the tree take a left. Oh. Whew. Did you guys see it at all? How nuts is that? That's my, that's my first one. How close was it? I heard some rustling as I was crossing, and once I got over there, like from where that log is, maybe about like 10 yards, 15 yards up, yeah. that's when I saw her shoot across. Was it a girl? I don't, I, he, she, I don't know. But then uh, it came back, because I think it canyons out right there. Yeah. So she spooked out and then went over again. <laughs> that's spooky stuff. Later that night, Shelby drew up a lovely play-by-play -play for her dad to show him exactly what happened. And as you can see, I was just a touch too close for that cat and it bolted once I reached the other side. It then seemed to canyon out off to the left, which required the cat to bound back across our line of sight as a beeline for the group of trees and potentially up and out of this section of canyon. Even though that sighting left us all a bit shook up, we weren't about to let that stop our morning on the water. All right, well, we didn't get skunked. Beautiful. Let me know when you got some. Nope. Good. All right, I'm going to drop the net. Let him go right here. <laughs> Thanks, Brendo. Cast over to your left into that current. And really just rip it through. That's a fish. How's he feel? Decent. He's fighting like he's decent. It didn't take it very hard, but now it is. All right, buddy. Okay, fine. Oh, he said, yeah, I'm fine. I was gonna give you a break. <laughs> What's up? What transpired yesterday compared to the fishing today could not be any more night and day different. We're using the same tactics and fishing very similar water, but for whatever reason, upstream was not working out. As our hopes were beginning to fade, Shelby managed to find herself a pretty feisty rainbow, which was a cherry on top. But outside of those two fish, we didn't sniff another bite the entire session. We noticed fish activity was much lower and the numbers of anglers present had risen drastically. As we were making our way back up, we must have passed four different parties of anglers making their way downstream from the bridge access point. I got that feeling in my gut that something needed to change, so I piped up and offered up a plan B for the group. I would hate to use desperate, but you know, options are starting to run thin. This is what I was half expecting, you know, with people getting here and making it a little bit more crowded. Um, if, Tom, we're stopped. if we were to bail right at this second we could get out get to alpine potentially have a diner open be able to sit down kind of plan because any later i think i uh, i don't know I, i'm feeling like we won't have the motivation to bump down some two track sit on a dirt road for an hour and then get to service 5 p.m 6 p.m 7 p.m well it is 10 30 it's gonna take us an hour out at least so two call it two it's gonna take us an, about an hour to Alpine. 
Mm. How opposed to an afternoon, evening lake? Because then I'm sure there's a campground, like dispersed camping, super easy to get to from Alpine. How do we, how, honestly, how do you feel about staying here? Not great. I mean, fishing the rest of the day, I think, would be a wash. I mean, we've caught two, and it's been tough for the first two... Three hours. Three hours. And now we've seen... Six, seven people? One, two, three, four... Uh, there was four dudes that left there, and that guy. That's four there. The fifth. Oh the shit! Six. Yeah, dude. There was. Like I didn't three, see those four guys. Yeah, you guys were facing this way. There was like three dudes that walked out, and then that other guy walked out. I was like, what the fuck? Holy smokes, clown car. Mm. Um. Yeah. Then I. I say we get the because if they've come this far down, you know, that's already, pretty far. Already fished. Like, what is that? Four or five miles. One. One buddy came from up there. Another buddy. Well, I, I don't know about the dog guy. I bet he came from the bridge. I mean, I think it's still going to be fished out wherever we go, but right. I'm fine with just changing it. But also, like, a lake is not, too. like, you don't have to, like, fight, is, I feel like. No, it's just, like, find a spot and see. Yeah, because, like, here, you don't want to be on top of them sure. within yeah, let's a couple go hundred yards. Let's just go. Let's we'll see something else. So, leave, Alpine, game plan, lake being spot one, Gila being spot two. Find a campground. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Or find a clearing. Even though this trip had been a somewhat last minute switch up, I could not have been more happy with how it turned out. Holiday weekend and all, we'd managed to escape the crowds for a few days and find some really great fish. Add in a mountain lion sighting, a couple river baths, and of course, endless jeers around that fire pit, and this was just about perfect. Well, perfect except for that hill. And I'm speaking on behalf of Shelby on that because her hate for this hill is almost immeasurable. Begrudgingly, I have to agree that this wasn't exactly my best plan, but in all fairness, access down in order to get to these fish and avoid the other anglers was almost a necessary evil. So as we all successfully scaled this beast one last time, we gathered all our belongings and unceremoniously threw them into the back of our respective vehicles to be dealt with at a later juncture. For now, it was time to bid our fantastic camp farewell and hit the road. Now. For continuity purposes, I figured I would leave the rest of this in, even though we didn't really have much luck at our plan B. It was a lovely little tailwater, and for the most part, it looked fishy. Granted, the flows were moving quite fast, and the overall holding water wasn't exactly anything amazing. But despite this, it was still fishy. We pushed our luck well towards the evening, trying to muster up any sort of redeeming bite, and quite literally, on my last hole, I managed to trick a wild rainbow with a black streamer to finish out the day. With Tom and Shelby back at the parking lot, organizing their messy vehicle, I needed to hoof it back and do the same. In the moment, it's hard to fully realize it, but my god, this had been an incredible month in Arizona. Well folks, if you are seeing this, then that means the video is over. The last southwest sunset is slowly making its way to the other side and all I have to say like always is thank you thank you so very much for sitting through and watching this video all the way to the end it means the world to me that you guys like these videos that you can relate and and, and share these with your friends and kind of the similar experiences that my friends and I go through it's I don't know, it's really cool for me it's about capturing these memories but I'm so happy that there's folks out there who can yeah, laugh long, enjoy it, and yeah, maybe learn a thing or two along the way. But folks, before I skedaddle, I just had to make a couple of thank yous, as always. Thank you to all the brands that support Fly All Season. Of course, I'd be doing this without them, but with them, it really helps as far as the gear, the information, all that, it, it's, it's really great. So if you have any questions about what I'm using, how I'm using, Check out the description, I keep them all down there. Discount codes too for the gear that I use. All great brands, all great people. You know who you are, thank you so very much. And off of that, the Patreon folk, thank you so much. Again, it's amazing to me that there's people out there who are willing to, yeah, send out a little bit of their hard-earned money to help make something like this happen. Because it's a lot, it's a lot of work. Logistics and gas and gear, I mean, it, it gets expensive. So just know all of your uh, very generous offerings are being used to its fullest to yeah bring you more stuff like this so folks that is quite enough for me I gotta book it before I'm hiking out in the dark so wherever you find yourself be it in the beautiful southwest or in your backyard make sure to keep those feet in the water until next time tight lines Let's